In this video, we're going to talk about how to properly use images on your online store to really maximize sales and get customers to trust you and buy into your brand and just enjoy the experience of shopping with you uh, on your website. So I've just knocked this up very quickly as like a test online store that I can show you these demonstrations with. Um, so the main thing is I can't believe on so many dropshipping stores that I see that they haven't got like a a nice welcoming image when they get on the website. They've just immediately got just a row of products, you know, with just prices and et cetera. And it's just not very inviting or sort of attractive and makes your brand look good. So the first thing I'd recommend is have like a really nice banner image that takes up most of the screen. It makes your site look a lot more professional and clean and tidy. Um, and then that's the best way to make a really good first impression because most people when they visit a new website especially yeah especially a new website they'll just spend a couple of seconds on it to decide whether it's worth looking at or not so as soon as they land on your page you want them to have like a bang wow that's a really nice image let's see what else is around and then they're more likely to actually stay in your store instead of just closing the tab and moving on to something else so start with that and then same with the collections so it doesn't matter whether you're using Shopify or another web platform. Um, I'm assuming that the products are arranged into collections. So when you're displaying products, it's good to just have the product. But when you're showing collections, which is like the higher view of the products, it's nice to have actual professional photos of the products rather than just, you know, the plain ones with the white background. So it's good to have high quality photos for these as well. And then you're going to make a really good first impression when someone visits your store. So that's the home page. The main thing I want to talk about is actually the collection pages and the product pages themselves. So if we go to this one here. Now I've purposefully laid out this collection page like this because I want to show you what's good to do and what's not good to do. So images for products should always be with a transparent background if you can because it just looks very clean. It keeps the focus on the products rather than any distracting backgrounds which you can see on this next row so this is okay the second row but the first row is ideal because it's just very focused on the product like if i go to amazon and then if i go to passport covers like yeah you can see here they're all white backgrounds because it just looks cleaner, more professional. And the general rule is if you're in e-commerce, what Amazon does, you should probably copy because they've spent millions or tens of millions on researching and studying every single aspect of the customer experience online. So they normally know what works best. So if they have white backgrounds, you should have white backgrounds too. Um, so that's that. But if you can't find white background photos for the products you choose, it's fine to use ones which do have a background, but just make sure that then all of the products in your collection have a background. Don't have it where some have a white background and some don't have a white background because it just looks really messy and unprofessional. And a lot of dropshipping short stores I see make this mistake and it just looks a bit amateur and more likely for people uh, that are going to actually leave the website and think, no, nah, this doesn't quite look right. So do ideally the clean background images. And then what you should definitely not do, which I see a lot, is some people think you can just import products from AliExpress and then that's it, start making millions of dollars. No, that's not how it works. So don't have products where they've literally still got like Chinese writing at the bottom or a logo on there because that immediately raises questions of why is there a logo? Why is there Chinese writing on this? Like it just looks very suspicious. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see this on your screen, but there's a very light gray background around this product. And then this one's got a clear background. This one's got a full background and this one's got like the main image and then a smaller image pasted in. And this one, the guy's holding something, whereas none of these have a hand in the photo. So make your collection pages as consistent as possible. Don't have it where it's sort of really random because I'll tell you why it's so important, not just the obvious point of it looks cleaner and more professional, but imagine you're looking at a new website for the first time. Your brain's having to work a bit harder 
to sort of understand what it's seeing because it's not used to it. So when you first land on a page, if it's just these clean photos, like it's really easy, you know, like, yeah, these are passport covers. This is exactly what they look like. Perfect. I'm understanding this very easily. This is slightly more complex because your brain has to differentiate between the actual product and the background, and that's a bit more work. And then this is where consumers just get automatically turned off because they're having to differentiate between products where it's all of the products in the photo like this one, or if it's just one product and then this one's closed, but then this one's open and then, oh, why is there a logo there? Or, oh, why is there a hand here? And, oh, look, there's two photos in this one. And, oh, I wonder what this Chinese writing means. And you're just overloading the brain when it's trying to just very quickly figure out something new. So make it as easy as possible for people to understand exactly what you're selling, make it look professional, make it look clean, and then you've got a much likely, higher likelihood that they're gonna purchase something from you. So those are my tips for the collection page. And then if we go to one of the product pages, uh, which one should we choose? Let's go here. Uh, actually, I think I've got a better example. Let's go to this one. Yeah, okay, so when it comes to the product page, if you can, it's always good to have more than one photo. So again, a lot of people that are drop shipping, they'll just use the main photo from that they get imported from AliExpress and then just use that. But it's always good, or the opposite, which is just as bad, is they'll put all of the t like 20 to 30 photos in that are just, like most of them are garbage and there's only a couple that are actually good. So. I always like to have minimum two, maximum five of any product. And what you just wanna do is give the customer a better look. So obviously they can't pick it up and have a look around themselves. So they're more likely to buy if they can see the back, the front, the side. So in this particular example, there's one that shows the front and the back's obviously gonna be very similar because it's just a passport cover. And then I just show one on the side so you can see its thickness and how it opens. And then also the other products that are in the collection. So those two products very clearly show what the product looks like. Those, sorry, those two images clearly show what the product looks like. And then the third photo, which is absolutely essential, and I very rarely see done, is have one photo that shows social proof. So most people will not buy a product from a new store if there isn't social proof. And by social proof, I mean, can you be trusted? Like, are other people interested in this product? So. For example, if you're running adverts and your adverts got a lot of likes and comments, that is social proof because it shows people are interested, people are buying, and it's like, oh, I wanna get on this action too. But assuming that your advert's new and you don't have engagement or you're not using advertising, they've just come from your website a different way, uh, come to your website a different way, then they need social proof to make you trustworthy. Like a good product by itself isn't gonna make people buy something from you. They're handing over their credit card details. So they need to trust you as well. So in addition to the product photos, I always have one photo for social proof. And if you're just starting and you don't have any like customers who have sent you photos of their products or any reviews on social media where they're saying, hey, this brand is great, then what I do is this. And this is um, taken from AliExpress. So I've added this title myself. So I've called my store Demo because it's just a demonstration. Uh, and I've added this title of Demo Customers Love This Product. And then this actual scale here of these five-star ratings is from AliExpress. So I'll show, you, I'll show you how to do that. So if you go to my, uh, my products, all you do is... So obviously you're gonna choose products that have got a high rating anyway. So you're always guaranteed to have like a five star rating or a four and a half star rating because you won't drop ship with products that have got anything lower than that anyway. So that's a really good thing. And then all you do is find the product. So go back to the AliExpress page and then, oh, here we go at the top. There's the feedback tab, click the feedback tab. And then here you get that rating. And then all you do is screenshot this rating graph here and then paste it. So I use Photoshop because that's just what I use, but you don't have to have Photoshop. You can also just do it in Microsoft PowerPoint and then just crop the, or on Apple, I think it's called um, Keynote. Uh, and then all you do is just crop the sides to make it just this white box here and then just add like a title. 
Oh no, I'm not Photoshop. And then just add like a title. Um, and then you're good to go. Then you've got this sort of social proof of people are actually buying it. It's got five stars. And then ideally it'll have like a reasonably high quantity uh, of five star reviews as well. And this goes back to the uh, one of the first modules in this course of where I said it's good to have products that aren't at zero and you're going to try and make a success out of a product with zero sales. It's good to have sales where there's like at least 500 to 1,000 and then you've also got that social proof built in that you can copy and paste and add to your store. Um, so this is a great way to start but once you do start getting orders and you encourage customers to sort of tag you in their photos definitely put those in either in addition to or instead of this photo here because customer photos are the best social proof like you're actually showing customers who have bought their products so they can in addition to see the products what it looks like in real life they can also see that customers are so happy with it that they're posting on social media so Social proof and great product photos are essential. And then make sure that your collection photos are consistent and ideally with a white background. Uh, and then on the home page, focus on beautiful photos that make a great first impression and make your site look trustworthy and like a brand that people want to be associated with. So because if you've got like a sexy looking brand, then people will naturally want to associate themselves and share your content and your promotions on social media because it actually looks good no one's going to want to share with their friends a website that looks terrible so those are the three points the home page the collection page and the product pages make sure that those are on point and then you're going to have a great chance of converting your customers uh, into loyal ones in the long term